it's, it's been remarked quite a few times that local people saying, we never knew it existed, this building, or how interesting it was. We've lived here for years, and yet we've never been here, we've never seen it. I would see a very strange building, completely out of place. It possibly should have been in Egypt. <laughs> somehow it got somehow moved from Egypt and stuck in, stuck in uh, well, Richmond, Twickenham area. Brompton Cemetery it started in 18, it was built in the year 1854. The Earl of Kilmory, second Earl of Kilmory, bought a place in Chertsey, Woburn Abbey. And then he was there for eight years. He got bored and decided to, to move to Gordon House. So he bought Gordon House and then moved it again. And that's where you see it today. He was a sort of a playboy of his day, a very, very rich one. And apparently he was quite a, a sort of rebellious type. He used to like a lot of drinking and gambling, and he used to bet on quite a few things and do dares, some crazy things. And he took a shine to a, a mistress of his, Priscilla Host, who is originally a guardian. She was, um, she was a young child he took under his wing on behalf of a friend, but eventually a, a relationship developed, and she, uh, she had a child with him, an illegitimate child called Charles. Unfortunately, about nine years after Charles was born, she developed heart problems and she died in 1854. And he was so heartbroken and the way he wanted to show his true love was to lavish huge amounts of money on a mausoleum and as in memory of her. He used the most expensive stones. He used um, both pink and uh, black granites from Scotland that came all the way from well, Scottish islands. And in the 1850s, it's quite a feat to transport it all the way to London, have it all, all carved in, intricately, and it fitted together like a, a, a giant kit. It's incredibly hard to carve granite, especially the ornate way we've done it. And there's such tight joints, you can barely put a fingernail between the joints in, this, in the building. It's that well made. It was, it was very sort of, sort of progressive if you in, in employed the lace Egyptian styles in your sculptures or buildings. And if you had the money, you did. And he went to much further extremes than other people. He took it quite accurately. And at the time, when he, if you look at it, it has some hieroglyphic emblems or motifs in the structure. They, they didn't know what they meant because they hadn't been deciphered at the time. But he had it faithfully reproduced. And he had a bit of a definite obsession as well, because uh, before he died, quite a few years before he died, he'd regularly get prepared for his death. And he'd, he'd dress up in his uh, white robes, his funeral robes, and he'd get pushed by servants in this little carriage through the tunnel, and apparently be laid in his coffin. And he'd lie there for as long as he wanted, until he was sort of happy. And it would be next door to where Priscilla was buried in her coffin. It's very impressive, it's got a bronze door, a very, very heavy bronze door, and it's so cleverly made, and the lock as well, it's amazing, it's lasted all this time. Inside the mausoleum itself, you'll notice where you've got this uh, marble relief, this sculptured re relief in white marble. Um, there's a space there, and that space was for the son Charles. It depicts him and the son Charles, who's about eight or nine years old, and they're dressed in strange sort of Roman Greek classical style. And it shows his mistress on her deathbed. And there's an angel hovering above with a cross. So the coffins as well, the detail in the coffins. He's got the most expensive ornamentation to the coffins. So you see very, very ornate brass handles with cherubs and flowers and things. And also they have this pattern of these I think they're brass studs all the way around. And they're always done in this sort of purple velvet. And also you've got a, a lead plate on top inscribed with, with the uh, name of the deceased. And also the thought put into the, the actual skylights. You've got these four star-shaped yellow skylights. And they're designed such a way that in summer, about midday, the, the stars are projected onto the, where the coffins are actually projected down, so you've got a star on each coffin, and in the empty space where Charles should have been. So you get internal reflections inside the mausoleum, so you get these reflected stars all around the walls. 
Some people think it's romantic. Some people think he's abusing his position, his wealth, to get his way with a, a young woman, even though he loved her very much. I mean, he, he used her as a plaything, essentially. Again, it's another story of the way they squandered their money. We could even take from it that they've left amazing legacies of Victorians behind them through their architectural patronage, because he employed some of the, some of the best artists and designers of the time he could get hold of. I think it, it will be a, a lot brighter future. So it looks like we're going to get it restored. We're going to get the walls and the railings repaired, which has been now nearly 30 years in waiting to get it done properly. So hopefully, once that's done, then it, it will be worth visiting. People will think they will want to visit. It will become a local attraction. Hopefully, the council will promote it. So it's quite important to keep these sort of memories alive. Otherwise, everything's just anonymous, bland, grey. People don't know why things are called the way they are. Why, why have we got to kill Maury Road? Those type of things. Gordon House, why is it there? And um, why is the mausoleum there? Those type of things. It's all part of the history, the fabric of the area.